I ordered a Hot Air V-Work station a while back and it's just arrived. I've been soldering up some of my mini ESP32 S3 boards from PCBWay and I've been using my mini hot plate, but if you watched the previous video you'll know there are some issues with this as we've got components on the bottom of the board. So why not try it out with the hot air station? I had three recommendations from my fellow makers. This one is a bit of a classic and has been covered in detail by EEV blog in the past. There is a newer version that looks pretty good as well, and in hindsight it might have been better as I could have easily swapped this cable for a UK one. But in the end, I went with this one as everything is integrated into the hot air gun itself. Let's see what we've actually got in the box. Well, we've got instructions, it might actually be worth reading these for a change. We've got an Australian plug, which is interesting. I don't see any sign of a fuse, but maybe Australian plugs don't have them. Let me know in the comments. And we've got this very non-UK standards compliant UK adapter. The earth pin should be completely bare with no insulation. And we've got a spare heating element. There's a bunch of nozzles. I'll have to do some YouTubing to understand what these are for. Let's get this thing opened up and see what's inside. This assembly is pretty easy. We just unscrew this end cap and the device comes apart. Unscrewing the cable clip gives us good access to the control PCB. There's a couple of things that immediately jump out to me. The earth wire has just been snipped off, so I guess our dodgy adapter is completely fine. The live wire is pretty close to this screw, but that might not matter as the screw doesn't really seem to be connected to anything, but it's something to watch out for when I resolder this. I'm also slightly confused by this unpopulated capacitor. There seems to be some legs sticking out, but I can't see any component on the other side of the board. Very curious. Let's see what we can work out about the circuit. Feel free to chip in with a comment if you can add any extra information. These two wires are for the fan and are switched by this MJD122 power Darlington resistor. The heating element is connected here and here. This white IC here is a CT3041, which is a zero crossing photo triac optocoupler. So our heating element is driven from the mains and the power is controlled by the photo triac. Over here we've got what look like the components of a switch mode power supply. Flipping the board over, this chunky thing is an MPN transistor. It might be the switch for the switching power supply, but I'm not entirely sure. I can see an EE prom, which means this must be the microcontroller. I'm not sure what it is, there's no markings, but it feels like a safe bet that's what it is. There is some interesting power control going on, as when you plug in the device the control side of things powers up, and then when you turn the switch it starts heating and blowing air. If it's above 100 degrees C, then when you turn it off the fan keeps blowing until it's cooled down. Quite a nice safety feature. 100 degrees will still cause a nasty burn, but it hopefully won't set anything on fire. This power electronic stuff is really not my thing, so I'll be interested in what you all think of the build quality. There do seem to be lots of slots cut into the board to provide isolation. So I've desoldered the main cable, let's get a new one soldered on. The only thing I'm not really happy about is the two wires soldered onto the same pad. The cable I'm using has a standard UK compliant plug and it's got a nice 3 amp fuse, so hopefully it's a bit safer. However, I'm not sure what to do with the earth wire. I guess ideally it should be connected to the metal part of the gun. Let me know what you think. For now, I'll just tape it off. Reassembly is pretty straightforward. We just screw the PCB back into its place and then clamp the cable down. That was quite traumatic, but we got there in the end. Now as usual I've got way too much solder paste on the board. I don't know about you, but I find these solder syringes really hard to use. Maybe I should invest in some of these to get my grip strength up, but it's really difficult to squeeze the paste out. I've set the temperature to 300 degrees C, and I'm running with maximum airflow. One thing that's nice is the air is pulled through over the PCB, 
so the components should all be cooled by the airflow. I wasn't sure which nozzle to use, so I just picked one that seemed sensible. It takes a bit of time, but eventually the solder starts to melt and we can go around all the edges of the board. There's a couple of solder bridges, it's hard to get this right without a stencil, but we can easily fix these with a soldering iron. Close inspection shows that everything's soldered up and it doesn't look too bad. There's a few pads where there's way too much solder, but everything is connected and I feel like this should work. So does it work? Of course it does. It's another blink sketch. I'm really sorry. You can watch the video on the screen now where we do a bit of testing with the board and go through the schematic 